Lateral bending and rotation, cervical spine. We're going to do both rotation and lateral bending of the cervical spine initially in a seated, uh, supine position, then we'll work into a seated position. Uh, for the examination, we tend to use in lower cervical spine C4, so that's what I'll use for demonstration purposes. For rotation in the supine position, your segmental contact point is going to be the articular pillar. How you find that, whether you want to establish the vertebral prominence by palpating the most prominent spinuses in the lower cervical upper thoracic spine and pushing P to A on them, and as you palpate superiorly, you're going to find there's going to be one spinous as you push P to A, moving this, uh, the neck into extension, that anteriorly translate as the neck goes into extension, that's C6. So from there I could palpate up two spinous processes and go out about laterally about a third of an inch, and that's going to put me on the articular pillars. Whether you choose to use your fingertip contacts or the lateral side of your index, that's all preference. It's up to you. Once I have this established in my contact, the posterior aspect of the articular pillar, the rest of my hand is just going to cradle comfortably the person's head. I'm going to, in essence, for demonstration purposes, we're going to look at left rotation. With both hands, I'm going to rotate the patient's head to the left. I'm going to pay attention to the feeling that I have within the upside hand, or in this case, my right side hand. As I rotate the head to the left, what I should feel is I'll keep on rotating until I feel a subtle back pressure come into my contact point. That back pressure that you feel is the joint in pretension. To assess joint play, I can come to pretension, back off just a little bit, and come back to pretension. In essence, if I have normal joint play, the contact that I'm on, if I listen to the articular pillar below, as I bring it to pretension, the one that I'm on a contact, in this case C4, should glide forward of the other one. In other words, there should be a staircasing effect. That would be normal joint play. If I feel the two move as a team into pretension, it's basically telling me that there's either reduced or there's absent joint play. Once I feel pretension, to establish end feel, from pretension I'm going to spring through that joint. For rotation, the downside hand stays stable. It's done its job. The upside hand is going to continue to spring through that articular pillar, P to A, that's your line of drive, feeling the give and the recoil, if any, is present. You can liken this maneuver to kind of like driving your car on the way home. You'll turn the wheel, the motion that you have in this hand is kind of like turning the wheel of a car. So I'm going to rotate the patient's head till I feel pretension. Downside hand and different hand now stabilizes the head. Upside hand is going to spring P to A through that joint, an eighth of an inch, feeling the give and the recoil. Things to watch out for. People have a habit of, once they reach this, they try to do everything with their finger by springing PDA with their finger. It's not very good doctor ergonomics to do so. You want to use your whole hand to further the movement. But remember, you're assessing the joint down here where your contact point is, so you're going to lead through that contact point. Other people, what they'll tend to do is they'll get to pretension, and then this hand will go lax as they literally keep on rotating the head by rotating actually the cranium but nothing coming through this hand contact. Once again, this is the contact of your joint you're assessing. This is your contact point. The whole hand is used, but you're springing through the entire hand. This is your lead. In essence, it's your point guard. So this would be left rotation in the seated position. For lateral bending, our segmental contact point is going to be the spinous process. Your line of drive is going to be perpendicular to it, or lateral to medial, in this case, from, if I'm doing right lateral bending, from right to left. I'm going to turn the spine over here because you need to see the cervical spine and lateral bending. The line of drive is always perpendicular to the spinous process, but it's going to change depending on where you are in the spine. We always want to, our line of drive is always going to be through the facet planes, and you can see the facet planes change in the spine as we go from inferior to superior. As a general rule, here are the two facet planes. In lower cervical spines, your line of drive with your contact hand is going to be towards the opposite shoulder. In the upper cervical spine, the facet planes are like this. In essence, you're pushing through what appears to be the plane of the lip. In the middle cervical spine, it's usually somewhere in between the difference. So you can kind of look at this as a fan. That would be the lower cervical spine. And then into the upper cervical spine, the facet change plane, you're always perpendicular to that spinous, but this, in essence the spine is, is on a curve, so we're changing. We're always perpendicular to it. 
We can liken the spine to, in essence, a stick. We're going to bend a stick over, it's like bending a stick over your knee. But in this case, your contact point is your knee. This is your fulcrum. The spine is a stick. Your indifferent hand is a hand that's helping you bend the stick over your knee. If we do this correctly, with my contact hand, I'm going to take my, my contact hand and I'm going to push P to A into that spine, excuse me, lateral to medial into that spinous process. As with the indifferent hand, I laterally bend the spine over my contact. The spine will give effortlessly, easily, easily and both effortlessly until you reach a point of pretension. In other words, the spine starts to give you resistance. From neutral to that pretension, joint play is the spine should feel like it bends away from you and it feels like it actually should feel like it's bending over your contact like this. That would be normal joint play. If you feel the spine move as, a, let's say, a unit or a team, that motion segment, what's saying is that, for the most part, joint play is either reduced or absent. If you do this correctly, wherever your contact point is, the spine beneath it is basically going to remain straight. That means that you've made a good fulcrum out of your contact hand. If you see the spine laterally bending below your contact point, it usually means you're not diving in with your contact point to create this fulcrum around it. So I'm going to laterally bend until I feel pretension. Once I find pretension, all I'm going to do is continue pushing through my contact point from lateral to medial as I traction I to S with my indifferent hand for lateral bending. At eighth of an inch, feeling the giving quality, the resilient quality of a normal joint or the absence of this in an abnormal or subluxated joint. Laterally bend, and then I'm just going to spring through with my contact. Segmental contact point, spinous process, line of drive, lateral to medial from right to left or left to right. So this would be lateral bending and rotation of the cervical spine.